Hi, I'm André. I'm Markus. We are Blind Guardian. We hope they will be good, that they know the lyrics, that they are well prepared, they can sing with us. And if they are not good, we throw them all out. Yeah. <laughs> the atmosphere depends on the fans. Which the direction? Give you good music and you have to sing along. And we always love to do experiments in the studio or in creating the songs. It's just fun to, to do something unexpected. To, uh, some, to come up with some surprises for the fans, yeah. something they, they might not expect to hear from us. That's, uh, that's a kick for us. It came slowly. We started uh, in the first albums to uh, do experiments with uh, choirs and it worked out very very well and it became a trademark to have those choirs. And then um, we started the first time um, to have classical instruments on theatre of pain. And that um, from the point of view now it's not that good. But to the, uh, at that time at that time it was really extraordinary and um, we were in love with the song and we said yeah maybe that's the future to mix classical instruments and a metal sound. And um, with each album we did another song and tried to make it better. And now Wheel of Time and, and uh, Sacred Girls I think have a really good standard. And, uh, now that we work with a real orchestra and, and uh, real partitures, um, we reach the next step now. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the kind of lyrics that suit best to our music because you know the, the um, there are so many small details in the music and that's that's the same in the fantasy in the fantasy literature that we like like all the Greeks and stuff. Um, it just fits the best, and I can't imagine Hansi singing some, I don't know, political lyrics or something that, that just would not work together. And if you read between the lines, Hansi is giving also all those uh, um, space for those themes. I mean, you could um, have different interpretations and on some lyrics, and um, and he has a very black. Um, Humor and some sarcasm, and you always bring this in into the fantasy, and it's mixing it up. So you could even, if you read the lyrics a little bit different, they have political things in there or social. I think, you know, if, if I think about the Lord of the Rings, I think about the books. I mean, I, I, everybody in the band watch the movies, we like them, but you know, for me, when I think about that thing, I think about the books because that's what I read as a kid and that's what the Lord of the Rings to me. So the, it, it's not that we um, try to write songs about it to be a part of in that hype around the movies. We didn't care about that at all and we already had songs about Lord of the Rings on the very first album, far away from, from any movie projects. So I, I just think it's um, it's our way of you know expressing what we think about those those stories, how much we like them, and as I said before, those kind of lyrics fit very well to our music. So that's the thing for me. I mean, we always write the music first, and then we come up with the lyrics. So Hansi will come up with the lyrics. So the music is already telling a story, and you cannot fit every or whatever you like to, to a certain story or melody so you have to find something that fits and if the music is somehow written in a Tolkienish world then you need those lyrics as well and so Hansi always says wow that song goes that direction I maybe go for a story like this or that and we talk about it and, and most of the time um, he really Gets what I, what my first uh, impact is 
create the music and he gets it. And then if we both think the, the same about something, as, uh, about the song, then it can't be that wrong. And then I'm sure he's choosing the right theme. That song has a very, very long story because um, I started writing it for the orchestra project we have and um, then somehow it didn't fit in the orchestra project and we said okay let's try uh, to make it a metal song and um, we changed the whole approach of the song but it didn't come out well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we were not satisfied, so we worked again on the song and um, we brought in some more um, uh, trash elements and combined the orchestral elements with the trash elements and that came out interesting but still was not good, so um, we said okay, let's somehow see what comes out if we record the song and then our producer Charlie said there's lots of oriental stuff in there which we never heard, we never thought about this. We, we didn't knew if there was oriental melodies in there. So he said that's you need to, to focus on those because that's the most interesting thing in there. And then we featured the whole song in the orient, oriental way and even the orchestra started um, to change to those oriental melodies. And then we said okay, that's the way to go and um, the song became a new face and that's how it ended. And that's now um, a progression um, of 18 months, that song. So, um, yeah, in the end it worked out. And, but we never thought about doing something like this at the beginning. It just it grew and grew and grew and grew through different stages. Right now um, we rehearse right into, right into Obsession and we want to bring in the song in the next days. Um, unfortunately not today. Still need some it, we rehearsed it today, <laughs> we rehearsed it today, but it needs to grow. <laughs> I think the Bath song definitely is one of the highlights in every Blind Guardian show. If you're on, in, a, in front of, I don't know how many thousands of people, and they start singing this song, it just gives me goosebumps still every day. So it's definitely a highlight. Yeah, and that's probably the song that everybody knows in the metal scene. So they don't like Blind Guardian, they don't know any songs of Blind Guardian, but the Bath song, they will be there, they will sing. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. That's, that's okay. the problem, they know that one too. We have to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's very, very different from all those projects you probably know. Um, we created some music, we wrote music just for orchestra. And Hansi is um, creating different characters, so he's singing all the characters by himself. And um, it's from the music more like a soundtrack, a movie soundtrack. And from the vocals, it's a little bit like a musical, but more like Black Guardian songs, I would say. So. Um, if you listen to it, you know from the first second who did this. Because it's blind, pure Blind Guardian music, just played with different instruments. And because of this it has a, a different approach. It's a little bit Nightfallish, I would call it. So if you like the Nightfall album and you could maybe think about an acoustic Nightfall album with lots of orchestra or something like this, then you are there. But it's not kind of a rock opera or something like this, or those projects, it has nothing to do with those. There's, there's no Fear. fixed role, like yeah, one no of us is the role. clown and the yeah. other one is the whatever, you know, it's, it's just, that's what I meant, we're, we're normal guys, we have our moods. Because we 
the Argylus four people, and he's a guest musician. We've, we've always been a four piece band, and it's just not good enough. We couldn't make it. <laughs> the worst thing, you start the bus and there's no beer in the fridge. <laughs> No, that's not that's not bad. I don't like beer, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, but no wine as well. Yeah, that's, that's, bad. <laughs> that's bad. That's <laughs> bad. Is there anything you would like to say to your fans? Yes. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>